The, hello, students. This is our final lesson, lesson six, on tessellations from our first module, Rigid Transformations. Great quote by Maya Angelou. We may encounter many defeats, but we must not be defeated. I love this uh, National Mad Hatter Day uh, because when I was a kid, uh, one of the productions I was in when I did some acting was uh, Alice in Wonderland, and I was cast as the Mad Hatter. That was a lot of fun to play. A little crazy. <laughs> uh, your agenda is on the left side, so let's go ahead and get started. In the first quadrant of your math journal, write down your daily learning targets. I can explain why the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. It was really a review from what we did last time, um, and then how we're going to apply that to today's uh, lesson. And then I can use properties of angle sums to reason about how figures will fit together. Uh, a little activator activity here is just look at these two images and determine are they congruent? Are they a rigid transformation of one another? Uh, and from our class discussion, we recognize that the eyes were a little bit further away on the right, the mouth is a little lower on the right, uh, and so therefore even though the oval itself, uh, the, the head itself, and the eye itself, and the mouth itself are congruent in size, um, they are not a complete congruent uh, image from one to the, the other uh, due to the difference in distances uh, for those uh, shapes. For your warm-up in quadrant two of your math journal, write the problem, show your thinking, and indicate your answer. We looked at these two uh, complex polygons uh, and wanted to make sure that we could draw the points corresponding to B, D, and E and label them B prime, D prime, and E prime. Uh, using these letters, we noticed that uh, they go around uh, in order, and so we were able to use that logic to go around in order uh, this way, right? So this would be B prime down here to C, which is on the curve. Uh, and so therefore, we were able to recognize that this is um, a rotation and reflection of the original image here. Draw line segment AD to A prime D prime and measure them. What we learned is that because these are congruent, the line segments that go to corresponding uh, angles are also congruent. Do you think that there could be a pair of corresponding segments with different lengths? Uh, if they're corresponding, we discovered, then they are always going to be um, congruent as long as the image themselves are also congruent. Then we started looking at uh, different polygons and their angles. And we discovered that we can make various copies of, for example, equilateral triangles that we can fit together around a single vertex so that the triangle's edges have no gaps or overlaps. And we noticed that we can use a 60-60-60, right? An equilateral triangle. Uh, so by using regular polygons, we can also discover other patterns, uh, but in some cases they may have gaps, in other cases, they may be able to align uh, each of the edges onto each other based on a certain rotation. And so, for example, if we look at the octagon, it does make a gap of a square, right? Uh, a true te a tessellation covers the entire plane. While this is impossible to show, <clears throat> we can identify a pattern that keeps going forever in all directions. This is important when we think about tessellations and symmetry. One definition of symmetry is you can pick it up and put it down a different way and it looks exactly the same. In a tessellation, you can perform a translation and the image looks exactly the same. So if we're thinking about, for example, moving from uh, this octagon to this octagon using a corresponding vertex or uh, angle Q to angle R, we can translate it across that vector. Same with moving from Q to S, which would be a horizontal translation. These are your notes, so go ahead and take your notes in your math journal on the right side using colors and tools uh, to make the process more meaningful to you. So I've summarized again a tessellation and then some key ideas so that two figures are congruent when they're in a sequence of translations, rotations, and reflections, matching up one figure with another. To show that two figures are not congruent is enough to find corresponding points on the figures which are not the same distance apart or corresponding angles that have different measures. 
the distance between two uh, corresponding points uh, or two pairs or pairs rather incongruent figures is the same this says that corresponding side lengths on polygons have the same length but it applies to curved figures also or to any pair of points not necessarily vertices on polygons some figures are made up of several parts for example in these two designs uh, of the circles they are both made of equal uh, circles but each of those six circles while congruent make up two different designs and therefore are not congruent uh, in their totality, uh, totality. Rotational symmetry. We can create different patterns of shapes including tessellations by creating complex designs that exhibit rotational symmetry. That is, the design is congruent to itself by several rotations. There is no cool down activity for today because we are taking that time to create our own and investigate our own tessellations, which will lead to your geometric art project. In quadrant four of your math journal, reflect on your progress in mastering today's learning targets, rate your self-confidence, and explain why you gave yourself that score. Remember that you have your palette of problems to com uh, complete, your drummer uh, pattern activity, uh, four quizzes to finalize, and your geometric art project. Your test will also be assigned to you, uh, and that will conclude our final lesson to Module 1 on Rigid Transformations. Be here, be ready, be respectful, and you will be great at Griffin. And remember to be kind to one another. Have a great day!